in a quiet suburb of Orlando, Florida, a tale of obsession, deceit, and tragedy unfolded. This is the story of Grant Amato, a seemingly ordinary man whose life took a dark and twisted turn. Night after night, Grant Amato logged onto his family's computer, immersed in the world of the virtual. His fixation on a Bulgarian webcam model Sylvia drew him deeper, blurring the lines between reality and fantasy. Sylvia danced and modeled, her images captivating Amato, who paid exorbitant sums for explicit content. But this was no ordinary fascination, it was an obsession that would prove to be his undoing. Cody Amato expressed fear that Grant might harm everyone. Jason Amato informed investigators that Grant took $150,000 from their father, including a home loan, and sent the woman over $200,000 in three months. When confronted, his family tried to salvage the situation, offering help and understanding. An ultimatum was given, break free from the grip of his virtual addiction or leave the safety of the family home. But as the pressure mounted, Amato's actions took a sinister turn. In the early hours of January 25, 2019, tragedy struck. Prosecutors would later allege that in response to the ultimatum, Amato committed the unthinkable, he shot and killed his own mother, father, and brother. This is the interrogation of Grant Amato. If you haven't already, make sure you have seen part one before continuing. So, I mean, I thought that it was weird, but I had just been kind of putting it out of my mind, thinking, okay, you had to go to work, or they're when, busy, or something. When you, when you were in your room, the hotel room, hotel. hanging out, watching TV? No, I didn't turn on the TV. I had on just, like, music uh, on the, in the background, just kind of helped me go to sleep. Are you sure about that? Because the hotel, it's weird, and I, did, I didn't know this. I used to travel a lot for work. They can tell because of the, the TV every channel you've been on when the TV is turned off. Because I guess they have a problem. Yeah, I guess they have a problem uh, with people stealing from that. Oh wow! So those things are well monitored. Even I, though you know that looks like a, a cheap. Yeah, yeah. Generic I, TV. I never even touched the TV remote. Gotcha. I didn't. I didn't turn on that TV at all. I was just using my service to like watch YouTube initially, and then. Um. um and then I you were still using the surface to, to, to check things. Right. So yeah. there'll be a history of everywhere you went on it. Right, yeah. Okay. As a, as a child, we're always told the truth always is the best thing to do, correct? Correct. You agree with me? Yeah. And accidents happen, and things in the heat of the moment, things happen that we wish hadn't happened. But we make, I, I do it myself sometimes. My kids will make me so aggravated, I'll snap at them and then walk away and say, Wow, I wish I would not have done that. That was not very adult of me to to snap at my child for something. Yes, they're wrong, but I should be the adult and not snap at them. Right. Tell me what you think, because I, I can tell by I've done this for a long, long time, and I read people the way they act and the way they, they talk to me and the way they answer questions. There's something you want to tell us. I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your body language and just your the way you act. Now's the time. Now's the time if there's something you want to get off your chest and give us an explanation of what's bothering you. Now is the exact time to do it. And I, I, I'm giving you that opportunity um, right now to tell me some, something you want to get off your chest. It's there. I can see it in your face. I can see it in your eyes. You're upset about that night. You're upset about it. You're upset about it. You've been that since we've talked to you. I can see there's something's been bothering you. Even though I don't know you from Adam's house, can't you see things in people that something really bothered this guy. It's not that, you know, I spent a bunch of money I shouldn't have on this girl. So be it. You did. It's over with. Money can be made back. Something's bothering you. I'm just worried about what is all transpiring from this. I, I think at this point right now, to be honest with you, Grant, you know what it is. Um, it's, it's in your eyes. Your, your eyes is, is, is the view to your soul, and it's, it's in your eyes. And it sounds stupid, and people don't believe it. Like I told you out there in the car, did I not tell you? You may not like what I say, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth every time, because I can walk in, walk in, in front of anybody in God and say, I don't care, I've told him the truth. And we usually know answers before we ask it. 
Right. I, I we me and, and Eva knew everything before before um, we asked you the questions. Now it's the time to, to come to Jesus. Be honest, because you're holding something back. I can see it in your eyes. People don't believe that the police will help you, but we are actually here to help you with issues you may have. Um, I think something happened, and you don't want to tell us, but right now is the time to get it off your chest. And I really wish you would, because it, it will make you feel better in the end. I, I genuinely don't have anything else that I can say about the night or you know the, the period of time afterwards. There's only There's only one opportunity to make that that good impression and to if we've done something we shouldn't have done you fess up it you caught your hand in a cookie jar you, you, you do it now is there anything else that happened at the house that you didn't tell us that you've left out or we haven't asked you that would be of importance um, or during the time that you drove around for those few hours did you ever really go back to the house that you haven't told us about? Something that something that happened that caused you to defend yourself. No, because again, it's like I didn't have I didn't have any means to defend myself. I mean, I didn't. Well, we know from talking to that there's there's weapons in the house. Right. We know that to be to be to be a fact. Something happened that caused you to defend yourself. Whether you had anything or not, you found something to defend yourself with. I can't tell you everything. I'm not going to tell you everything. But something happened. Whether your dad blew up on you, threatened you, physically harmed you, or hurt you, something happened that caused an altercation. Uh, and I, I didn't do anything at the house besides get my stuff together and take it out to my car. And that's, I mean, and I mean, I didn't, besides that one thing that I told you guys where I was going down the road just to come back, maybe, besides that, I mean, I didn't. So you saw nothing that was out of the ordinary? No. Did In the did Christmas area or 419 area? No, I mean. Did you even get up to the uh, Lake Mills Fort Christmas area where that guy's blinking lights are? No, no. When I came back, I didn't come up to there. There, there is, and you're 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 a better electronic than I am. I'm gonna go admit that. There's a digital footprint, and there's ways to see things that we know that don't make sense. Even though your phone may not have service, there's still issues with the phone. Right. And it was on you the entire time yes. when you left the house yes. until you were in touch with law enforcement. I, right. I can track places you've been. And I know where you have been, and I know what time you've been there, and what everything you're telling me isn't just copacetic and doesn't add up because because there's what I think, what you think, what she thinks, and then there's things that are hard facts that you can't manipulate. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think something happened at the house based on of my knowledge right now, and you're afraid to say it. You're afraid to to come back and say that I was a victim. I was hurt. I had something that happened there that I don't want you to tell because it's something maybe embarrassing or not good, but I know a lot more than, than I can let on right now. And things you're not telling me, I can't help you if you won't let me help you. So what? where's the missing piece? What have we missed here? I mean, when I, uh, when I had come back that other time, I crossed in front of the the red the dude's fence, the red blinking lights ones. Um, what time was that? I can't, I can't remember. That was that was Friday during the day when you said you were going to come back. Right, yeah. Okay. But it was after you did your interview. Correct. Okay. Yeah. If you did that, you would have seen something. And there would be something out of the ordinary that you would have seen. If you passed that, you passed something out of the ordinary. What was it? I saw, like, a news van and then... Uh, I don't think there there might have been like a cop car there. There was like traffic being being human okay. nature. Human nature. What do people do when I go back to my old neighborhoods? And I've lived a couple of places in Central Florida in the 23 years I've been here. I see something major going on. I get on my phone. Or I get on my computer. Some point. Look. What, I wonder what was happened by my neighborhood. And look. Did and that there, even spark your attention? I was. There's, I a was digi there's a digital footprint of of 
what where I went on my phone. This right here phone, they can tell me I looked I looked at these maps on my phone because it's on there. Mm -hmm. the, the memory's there, you can't delete it, you can't. You came back to the neighborhood. You saw some things that are really out of the ordinary. Right. And I don't believe for a second that you thought that I'm not going to look. What's going on? What happened to my neighborhood? I, I, I mean, I didn't search it up on anything on any of the devices that I have. Did you search it somewhere else? At, uh, Reme rem remember, like I said, I know things that you don't know. And honesty will get you all the, the things I can do for you. Beyond, I can't deal with a, someone who lies to me, right. but I'll deal with someone and help them till the end. No matter what, believe it or not, that's just me, and she'll tell you, mm -hmm. I'm very, it's, it's what it is. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say if I can do something that can help you, I'm going to help you because every one of us make mistakes and do things we shouldn't have done in the heat of the moment to protect ourselves or to protect somebody else. It happens. I know you've searched for something. I know something. I can't tell you exactly, but you said you won't. You tell me, and I'll tell you if you're being me, What'd you search? On uh, when I had gone to the Panera, I searched for like top stories, Oviedo or Chuliota or something like that. And found what? And then I saw that there was. Uh, it was like just the initial. Like it had like a video, but I didn't I didn't listen to the video, but it had just an initial thing of that there was shootings in Salt and Circle, but it didn't say like the address or who was involved. It was just like the, this is the preliminary. Was that was on one of the news stations? Um, what was what was the, what was the, what was the site you searched? I can't. I honestly can't remember. It. You, I think you, it was one of the Weshes. But and you remember. saw the story because we've seen the same stories. You've seen the story because there's a thing that will tell me how long of the of the time you spent on that. Right. You saw what happened. Yeah, I was on there for like 20 seconds. Well, what was your thoughts when you reviewed that story? I was freaking out, and I like, I didn't, I was just like blank, I didn't know what to do. Now's the time. Now, now is the time. So what do you think happened? Be I think that there was something that obviously happened at the house. Tell me what happened. I don't know what happened. I know better. Listen to me. I know better. I can help you, Grant, with honesty. I can help you with honesty. We think something else happened before you left the home that you're either afraid of or embarrassed to talk about. But we need to know exactly what happened because, like Danny said, we can place you there at certain times. And so we need to know what happened before you left that house because you didn't leave with everything being okay. I, I honestly, I don't, I don't have anything else that I can really say. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you even know why law enforcement got involved? Like what, what brought us to that home? No, I... You just said it. You know something bad happened there, out of your voice, not mine. I, didn't t I have not told you anything what's happened there. Something bad happened. You're here with us for a couple hours. You you admit that you've looked at, at a site and seen something bad happen because the video is not of just a general area. It's of a specific location, correct? Yeah, I saw I saw like a a driveway or something. Uh, Whose driveway did you say? I don't know. I saw like like there was like a gate. There was a gate, and then I saw like that there was like two cars, but then I didn't see anything past that. Okay. Well, is that driveway and gate your home? I I honestly did not fixate on it for like a long period of time. I saw like the one with an actual like gate. You've been here with us. You think something bad has happened at your house, and to date, so long you haven't even asked us about anybody. Well, that's because for the like the last time that I was arrested, I mean, like nobody would tell me anything. I'm. Once you start telling me something that's truthful that I know, then we're going to have a conversation of exactly what happened. I mean, you're a smart guy. You know something's happened at your home. You have law enforcement here. You haven't heard or gotten any well, emails. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm just scared as to what the answer is. Well, I you need to help yourself by filling in the blanks of what happened that night so we can give you the answer. 
Did anything more happen with you and your father besides him grabbing you up from the couch and yelling at you and kicking you out? Anything all, that at all? Did he pull, Did he harm you, hit you? No. Draw no. any weapons on you? No. He didn't do anything like that. I mean, he was just yelling. This, this is the time to come to Jesus, to be honest. Because you know more. I'm looking in your eyes. Your eyes tell me exactly that you you are hurting inside. I get it. Brother, I get it. You're hurting. And this is the You're only scared. time we can help you. Because once we get to a certain point, there's nothing I can do. It's, it's in the hands of who has it. Nothing I can do. Honesty is always the best policy. You get, you ca get caught stealing a car, you admit to it, I did it. How can I get help? What can be done to help me? And let me tell you the rest of my story. You're holding back. And if back. something happened that you were defending yourself, then we need to know that. If you were protecting yourself because you were in fear, then that makes sense. But we need to know exactly what happened for you to protect yourself. You can't minimize this. Once A, a wise man told me one time, once a, a, a bomb goes off, you can't defuse it. You can't. That's already out there. Now is the point to say, how do I put band-aids on myself to minimize the, the, the injuries I have? And we're giving you that opportunity. I want to give you the opportunity. I don't think you're a bad guy at all. I really don't. I think you're going through a very stressful and emotional time right now with being out of work and just dealing with all the problems with, with the arrest. You're probably not used to depending on somebody to pay all your bills. You're not having to do mom and dad or have to, have to give you money. Cody's having to give you money. And there's a significant debt to people, two hundred thousand dollars. I don't know what I do. I mean, mortgage. Yeah, I get it, or something like that, or, or a medical bill for my child. Yeah, I get it. But talking to some girl, you know, in Bulgaria, you know, you said you, you hit it right ahead. You were embarrassed about it, and you have nothing to be embarrassed about. about and that. you said you had a connection with her. Sure. Mm -hmm. And here, here he is, man. I want to help you. She want to help you. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta come to me with the truth now, because I, I already know the truth. I do. Here's here's the, here's the chance you can you can shake your head no and say I don't know you do know and I know you know she knows she knows you know. There's a we, reason you didn't go back to the house. There's a reason why you haven't tried to reach out. I mean, it's I why you haven't heard from anybody. Yeah, I mean, I must. I just I don't. I, it's like it's words that like I can't think of to even say. But I'm assuming that. You know, when you see that there is a shooting somewhere that, and it's around, and it's, that it's, it has to do with my family. Your family has no known enemies. Nobody has a problem with them. Nobody. Right. Continue she, what you were saying. You said when you But, I mean, it's like, it. I'm a, I just, I don't, I don't. Like, I, I just, I don't know how to even say the words. Well, what, what do you, give me a roundabout what you're thinking. That somebody in my family's dead. And how does that make you feel if, you think, if you're thinking that? I have absolutely no ability to, to comprehend the words. Because, like I said, I've been there for my whole entire life and even though there's been struggles and everything like that there has never been any issues there's never been the struggles or the issues like happened Thursday never for you I, I believe you 100% I believe it's never been like that but something happened Thursday unlike anything you've ever experienced in 29 years of your life never and maybe you felt that was rock bottom for you you were getting kicked out of the house your father gave you an ultimatum I mean, that's, you know, you're already dealing with the, the debt and, you know, now you have to stop talking to this girl and now you're being kicked out of the home. I mean, that's, I, I can understand how you would feel. I mean, that you'd want to lash out or, you know, if something happened, you'd want to defend yourself. Sure. Absolutely. But we need to know what happened. I mean, I know, I can tell that you guys are, like, leading me into a certain way of what 
The only thing we're leading you to is wanting to get the truth from you. Not trying to make you say something that's not true, that's not accurate. The truth. The end. That's it. That's all we want is the absolute truth. Because it's got to come from you. It can't come from us. It can't come from us. Do we know what happened? Yeah, we, we, we already know what happened. But it has to still come from you, the truth. Because the parties involved, that's in, in all cases, you want the truth from them. I don't want somebody to say something that's not true. Absolutely not. I want them to say, this is what happened, and here's why it happened. Because some, sometimes there are things that are justifiable. I'm dealing with a case right now where some people were, were jumped in a house, there was a shooting, and the people involved in the shooting are not going to be charged because they have the right to defend themselves. Nothing in the, in, in, in the state or federal law says you have to be seriously physically harmed or, 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 or killed. Nothing does. You have a right to defend yourself. Absolutely you have the a right to defend fear yourself. Of your sure. You being harmed or your life. But, Grant, I just need you to come. It's, it's there. It's there. I can see it. It's on the tip of your tongue. You want to say, let me tell you what, what happened. I'm being honest. I think you're being honest about 95% of the story. I truly do believe you're being honest about that. I think it's that 5% as most people because they're afraid to actually talk to us and tell us their story. And sometimes we can help justify their story once they tell us the truth. It just, it, it's, it's a fact. It happens. That people are afraid to tell things. They're afraid, oh, I'm going I'm to get, you know, you're not going to believe me, you're not going to like me, you're going to think bad of me. It's not the case at all. I have no opinion one way or the other. I don't know you. I don't think bad of you. I don't think you guys don't know you. If you're a friend, I would think different of you. Or, or somebody I know was, was something else. I or had previous dealings. Yeah, I may have an opinion, but I don't have an opinion of you. I just don't, because don't, we don't know each other. We've never contacted each other, have we? No. So there's no reason for me. But I've been honest with you the entire time. And I will continue to be honest with you till the remainder of my career at the Simmel County Sheriff's Office. I'll always be honest with you. You call me and say, hey, this is. I'm going to tell you. Again, you may not like it, but I'm going to tell you. This is me. And pe some people don't do that, and some people will tell you things that are misleading. I'm not going to tell you anything that's misleading. Because that's, that's my word. That's my integrity. That's my character. Um, now's the time, my friend. I want to help you. She wants to help you. And I'm telling you, I'm going to help you. Anything I can do within my power to, 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 to be honest with you. I'm going to. That's it. But i got to have the truth from you. I can't get it from somebody else. I can't get it from 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 her. I can't get it from other people I work with. It's got to come from you. I already I already know. I already I'm telling you I already know. I got a couple more years. I retire. I'm going to take my career with me and be happy with what I've done because I've been honest with everybody. I, I'm asking you to be honest with me too. I want to help you. I mean, apart from the times maybe being wrong, I don't. I genuinely don't have anything else that I can say about what transpired. The, uh, during the night time. So when, when you left your house, everybody was fine. Yeah. And when you left Cody, everything was fine. Well, we got called to the house because Cody didn't show up to work. So law enforcement goes over there, and can you tell us what we found? What do you think we found when law enforcement arrived at your home? Uh, I mean, you guys are talking about guns and you're talking about other things that... Uh, and then the, uh, the website and everything that something happened to him. Who's him? Cody. Did you do anything to Cody? No. Did you do anything to your mother? No. Did you do anything to your father? No. you have any reason to believe that anybody else would harm them? No. The only thing that I was told was that Cody would take care of it for me. And that's all that I know. But you didn't tell Cody what your father said to you, correct? Correct. So when Cody made those comments to you, what do you believe he meant by that? Have you guys ever talked about? That he was going to, I thought he was just going to do what he always 
does, which is where he just talks about it and he figures out whatever strategy he needs to. So if anything happened in the home to bring law enforcement there, what would you think happened? That there was a shooting. Between whom? I don't know. Between Cody and, and my dad. And why would you think that? To protect me or to help me or to do something with me. So you're telling me you did not shoot Cody, no. your father, or your mother? No. I mean, I don't know like what more I can say. Well, when law enforcement arrived, that's what they found. So you're the only outstanding child. You're the one that's been having problems with your dad. You're the one that we haven't been able to find for two days. Do you understand now why would we would be questioning you about this? Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't, like, I mean, I wouldn't be saying, like, all, like, you, I don't know the, the way to say, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, like, what to even say. We're trying to see if there's anything else that you've left out during the night from when you first came home and confronted your father, or when he confronted you until the time you left that you've not told us. There's no, there, there was nothing... Uh, there was nothing to that level of confrontation between him and I. So if anything happened in the home, you believe it would be Cody and him? Yes. Because I was... I mean, I don't... I. I I don't have you know access to anything. Well, I can tell you from what we learned right now, because you you know what the news has said, correct? You know what the news has said. I I only know that first story that I saw, and then I didn't look again. And what what did the first story say? That there was a shooting in the Salton Circle area, and the investigation is ongoing. Okay, and what did they say? They say the status of the people in, inside the house? What no. they say? Because all the news have reported the same thing. Every one of them. The sheriff has, has held a press conference. The sheriff has provided information to the media. And it's all it's okay. known. All that what has happened in the home. All that I had, all that I saw was literally like the paragraph, and then the last sentence was, "There's an investigation ongoing," and, and then I didn't. You saw more. Because the, at, at Panera, when you said you pulled it up, they they um, they um, had more information. Then they had more information than just there's been a shooting. There's a lot more information was given. It was all over the news by by that time. At the, the new news report exactly what had happened. We know that Cody didn't shoot your dad. We know Cody didn't shoot your mom. We know Cody didn't shoot himself. There's something And you still haven't asked us the that, condition of them or anything. That's because I'm I'm I mean I don't know what the normal proceedings are, but I don't I mean I The normal proceedings are for you to be honest about we, what happened. And then we help you understand everything that's going that's gonna go on from here on, on out of what our responsibilities are. And we don't believe you're being honest. We feel that you are leaving something out about what happened in that home. And the evidence tells us what happened in the home. But you need to fill in the blanks. Here's, 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 here's my hand for honesty. Here it is. We're here to help you do this, and you're not going to like something here in just a minute. And I know it's going to hurt you, but... You're leaving things out. You've got to you've got to take that step and cross over and say, okay, I have to tell you. You pro you'd probably rather tell us what happened before Eva opens that up. You probably want to tell us and save yourself some grief by saying, here, let me tell you. Here's what happened that night that I wasn't completely honest about. I honestly, honestly, great. I believe you've been honest about a, a very lot of things. I really do because I can I can account for your day. I can account for your night. For just we have a couple very small polls. Ninety-five percent of the story I already know. 
that's why you're you're here with us. And again, your cell phone's going to put you in the areas. You know, we're going to check exactly where you were throughout the entire time you started this conversation. No. So if you went back to the house and did something, or how long you were there, we're going to know. No, I mean, I never did anything like that. <laughs> Just things like, look, remember I told my digital footprint? Yeah. Your e-pass tells me where you went. We have a thing called, they're called LPRs, license plate readers, in different places all over everywhere. And every time your car passes, or any car, I look at, I have somebody, one of our Intel girls, put in, or guys put in the thing, hey, has this tag went by there? Yep. Has it been in a certain place? Yep. It tells me exactly where you went. Man, I'm telling you. I know it's hard to trust the police. I know people don't, don't trust the police. Don't trust the police. You gotta give us. You gotta give me the chance to, to to trust me. You have to. I already know. I know what happened. I know. Ninety five percent of the story. I, I know what happened. And and so do you. And it's in your face. It's in your emotions. It's in your body language that something is severely it's been, from, from the minute I met you in the hotel, severely bothering you. And you knew why we were there the minute we came to see you. You knew why we were there. You knew it. And you knew what I was going to tell you at some point during the course of the day. What was going to happen? You already know because you've checked on it. I know you've checked on it. There, there's a way to tell. I said that the best thing about the internet and electronics, they tell a story. And they tell how many times things have been looked at, what's been looked at, and how long you spent there. Sheriff can tell me every website I've ever been on this iPhone. Every one. And how long I was there for. Every meme I made up for to send to somebody something funny as a joke, they can see it. I'm here to help you, man. I'm here to help you get through all this. I'm an, I am an honest guy. I'm going to be honest. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to be honest to the very last day that I, I deal with you. And then when this, um, when this investigation continues, I'll go to the next person to be honest with them. But I've got to have you step over that little bit of light. We're basically, we got a line here. And you know, you're, you're, you're so close to wanting to step over that line. You've come all the way from the back side of that table over to here. And now you're right about right here that you want to do it, but you're scared. I get that, my man. I get you're scared. But something happened there that kicked us off unlike anything that ever happened in your life to get to where we are today. And I just need you to tell me exactly what happened. Here's your brother, the guy who's always looked out for you, correct? Paid for your trip to China or Japan, I'm sorry. Paid bills. Your dad and your brother have paid $200,000 of this video chat, whatever, with the virtual, uh, not the virtual, but the grown book area. Dad's pissed about the cost. I'm sure I'd, I'd be upset too. Two hundred thousand dollars of thing. Think of the car you could have for two hundred thousand dollars, or paid off college debt, or whatever. Some girl in Bulgaria got basically your college debt. Now I, I'm sure your brother and dad may have been as happy if you would take that hundred grand and paid off that 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 program. But there's a lot of pressure on you. I get it. I need you to step over, man. You're right there. You're right there at the end, ready to go. We're ready to to to, to take the information from you and, and move forward. We're there. I just need you. I just need you to take that last step over and say, all right, let me tell you what else. I've been honest about the vast majority, of this, but let me tell you what actually happened that night. It's there. When you're talking about the phones, because I'm I'm illiterate when it comes to phones and Wi-Fi and all that. So you said when your dad cut off your phone a few days ago, um, you had no phone number, like no way to call, just pick up the phone and call someone, correct? Right. So when you would communicate on Twitter, like you said, either on your cell phone or your Surface, you would have to be connected to Wi-Fi, is that correct? Right. Um, when you were in your home, were you connected to Wi-Fi um, no. talking to these you know, when you did the Twitter and so on and so forth, were you connected to the yeah. Wi-Fi at your home? Yes. Both no, 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 wait. No, no, I wasn't. I was on, um, I was on the LTE. I was on LTE. I was just on the cell service. And you can still talk, do the Twitter thing on cell service on right. the LTE at home. Right. Okay. And then when you are at the Publix, right, you're on what? That's on Wi-Fi. Publix is Wi-Fi. Right. Okay. And then you said the next time was at Panera. Yes. Was on the Wi-Fi. Both your cell phone and the surface. Just the surface. I hadn't, I hadn't, I, the Panera was just on the surface. Okay. 
All right, so again, with the whole digital footprint like Danny's talking about, you know that we will know exactly where you were at every time that you connected to Wi-Fi and how long you were connected to the Wi-Fi. You understand that? Yes. Okay. So when you drive away from the Publix or you're driving away from Panera, we will know all of that. And every hot spot you hit along the way, it's going to ding. It's going to make that connection, even just for a brief second. And I'm very familiar with that area out there. I used to live out of Port 19 and 50, and I know just about where every hot spot is um, along the way. So it's going to say, it's going to be boom, 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 boom. I want to help you, man. I really do. But I got you've got to take that, that little step and, and, and trust that we are going to do everything that, that we can do and be honest with you. We're going to do it. But I need you to I need you to step over. You have to, because w what happens if you don't? You know, it's going to be something that we just can't do anything to to to, to deal with. We can't. Honestly, I, 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 I've I've talked to people. I talked to a guy that was responsible for a lot of bad stuff in, in South America, and we sat down over the course of a month, and he finally admitted to some horrific, horrific things. And felt a lot because better about it, right? Because he trusted us. Because he trusted us. Because he realized, you know, you know, the typical thing, you know, the police, you know, all they do is lie to you, lie to you, lie to you, or whatever. No, I'm not. I'm like that. I'm not. I'm not no shame either. I just want the truth. I want the truth to be told, no matter which way it is. And you will feel so much better. We're talking about your family here. So you telling us anything that we're missing, you're going to feel a lot better by telling us the truth. Guaranteed. It's hard. It's hard to take that that leap of faith. It is. It's like jumping out of an airplane, an airplane with a parachute. Yeah, you know, if the parachute works the way it's supposed to, it's going to be okay. But do I? The first time I take it, I just got to take it. You got to take that. You got to take that leap of faith with us. I can only do so much with honesty. Honesty, honesty, honesty. So, what are you not telling us? Um, what happened at that home that you know? Grant, I know I mean, you want to tell it's us. on the tip of your tongue. I know you want it's, it's right there. It's, it's that bad taste you want to get out to get it off off your chest and uh, out of your head. But you got to do it. I can't make you say it. I need you to say it, so then we can move forward with the truth. Like I said we're we're at ninety five. Probably really we're probably close to getting ninety seven, ninety eight percent truth. But that last step you got to tell us because if, if when you say something, you get locked into a story, and it's proven to be false then you got problems because what what do people look at during the course of during the course of an investigation did everybody who was honest and who who was dishonest so there's an explanation to things you have to explain them and you're missing that two three four five percent of the truth that you're holding back and that's the most crucial for you right now is the truth sounds crazy but that's a fact. The truth shall set you free emotionally. You're, you're probably going to break down because you've got this all pent up inside you that you want to say it, but you're afraid to say it. I get it. I get. It. I've talked to people that make that, that makes it, that all this look like nothing. This whole investigation like nothing. They're just bad. Then once they get this off their chest, they say, you know, I didn't think I would, but I feel better. I know it's tough, but I feel better. Because now I've, I've told the rest of my story. You can't, you know, you, it's like reading a book and getting almost to the end, the conclusion, and you just shut it. You got to open up. You got to open up to me, man. I'm here, here to take that information from you, to get you over this hump, to, to, a little peace in your mind. You'll never have peace without saying, here. Let this me tell is you. exactly what happened. And, and I already, I already know. I'll, I'll be honest, with you, I already know. This isn't my first rodeo. She's been doing. We've been doing what? Between the two of us, 50 years. Over 50 years. Married. Over 50 years. And I've seen. So it what is it you need over. to tell us that we're missing? Step over. I mean, the only thing that I know is just that. I mean, I I uh, left the house later than what I had said. Um. Did you leave the house with your brother Cody looking like that? Or did you leave the house with your father looking like that? Or your mother? Is that how you left your family? 
No. Nobody, nobody else went into that house. Who left your family like this? If you were the one that's been depressed, you were the one that owes money, you were the one that got into a confrontation with your father. Who did this to your family? If you were trying to defend yourself or something else happened, we need to know now to help you. So tell us what happened, Grant. We're here to listen to you. Grant, you need the truth. We're, we're here to make this right. You've got to tell the truth. It's on the tip of your tongue, my man. I get that. It's Did your tough. father go after you and you try to protect yourself? No, I didn't do any of this. There, there's something that's going to come up that that is going to make this all come real. I'd rather it come from you than have to do it that way. Cause the evidence tells us what happened. You have to fill in the blanks. They can't tell me what happened. Fact, fact I know. She, she, never, she never held a gun. She didn't have a gun that night. Fact. He never fired a gun. Fact. He never fired a gun. Never did. This is the person right here, Mom, who always stuck up for you. Something happened so bad that caused her death, your dad's death, and Cody. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you just about how it happened. One, two, three. Based on evidence. Based on evidence. I know he did not shoot your mom. I know he didn't shoot your dad. I know he didn't shoot himself. And I know from, from video surveillance camera in the neighborhood, nobody else came to that house. I know. I know I can account for everybody that went to the house. I know so it. Tell us what happened. I know it. Listen to me. Hey, I know. Video surveillance tells me everything that happened this night. I'm telling you. Of people that, that you'd be surprised who in your neighborhood has video. And I know that nobody, there's only four people was at this house during this time. One, two, three, four. Tell me. You gotta tell me, man. You got to tell me. Get over that over that hoop. The video is the video if you're sitting there saying no, 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 and video shows something else, guess what? Big problem. Because it will wind up later on that that you can't get any help from anybody. A lot of this what people make decisions on is honesty. With somebody honest. Of course, of course you're gonna be somewhat dishonest at some point. We get that, we understand that. But at some point when you have that come to Jesus time that now I need to now I need to, to really I gotta tell you what happened. This is it. This is it. Video tells me everything I need to know about this from the neighborhood. And you're the only one left to tell us. I know it's hard to st look at me, Grant, look at me, look at my eyes. I know it's tough, man. I do. It's a tough thing to say, but we need to know what caused things at your house that night to come become so bad that we're this. He's violent. We know that. He's got a gun on. We get it. Cody just probably ran around, went around with a gun because he normally did. He, wa he walked in the house and was shot the minute he walked in the house. The minute he walked in. We see trajectory. We find the projectile. We've got everything on that. He shot over here and is brought over here. See it over there. Find the we found the bullets in, 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 the, uh, in the house. Mom's sitting her thing with a glass of wine doing her thing and she's shocked. You just got to step over and tell me, man. I want to help you. I do. The evidence is going to be there. Most people, we I would not. We have cartridge cases. We have projectiles. And fingerprints. So you yeah. just need to tell us what led up to this. You've been arrested, correct? Yeah. So we have your fingerprints, correct? You understand that? Physical evidence is something I can't manipulate. It's either there or it's not there. Didn't fire a gun. Didn't fire a gun. Didn't fire a gun. None of them did. None of them did. Cody did not go home. Or did your father point a gun at you? No, there's there's nothing else that I can say. But then you're... This is not going to end up the way you want to, the, with what you're telling me right now. Factual items do not support what you're saying. Nothing that we can make up or I think or she thinks or over thinks. you got to be honest. That, and the, the minute you start being completely honest, and you're pretty honest, I'm not going to say you're not. The minute you tell us what happened to get this to here 
is the second that we start moving forward with healing. You say you can't something? Yes, you can. There's something that you, you have done that proves different. I'm telling you. I, I, I don't know how else to, I can't make it any clearer. There's something there. Just tell me. Tell me. Your emotions, your demeanor, your body language, your eyes tell me everything I need to see about you. You want to tell me in the worst way. You want to get this, this pain off your chest. Do it. Come forward. T tell the truth. So I go into church and, and doing a confessional. When I go to church, a few times I go a year and I get up there and, and ask for forgiveness, I feel 100% better for all the crappy things I've done and didn't, didn't do what I should have done throughout the course of the year. Short with my coworkers, short with my kids, not, not living the way I should live. Gets me too. And when I go up there and make my confession to, to, to the pastor, it makes me feel better. I mean, there's just, there's just nothing else that I can say. There's nothing else that happened in that home while you were there that would lead up to this? No. Your father didn't point a gun at you? There was nothing else more than what I had said. Then who do you think did this? I don't know. I don't, I don't have the answer. give you a few minutes to think about this and think about life decisions and where we go from here. So a few minutes to get plenty of your thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Give you a few minutes. Hey, do you need a drink or anything, Greg? No. Okay.
only thing that I have is just the the times in which uh, I had left the house. You know, there was still an ar there was an argument when Cody had gotten home, and then there was nothing that that he could do to help me. So I don't remember the exact time when I actually left, but I had left later than what I had said. So you were home when Cody got home? Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, what time did he get home, and why did he come home? I mean, he got home at... I think like 10:30. I still think that's when he got home. It was like at around 10:30. I don't know why he was able to leave early. And what was going on at the house when he arrived? My uh, dad and my mom were arguing, and then I was still just packing up all my stuff or gathering the things that I could gather. Um. And then when Cody got home, he started to transgress with my dad, and I was still kind of just staying out of it and doing my own thing. And then the end result was still the end result, and then I had to still leave. And then so is it true that you still met Cody up the block, or was that... No, no. So you didn't meet him up the no. block. So why did you tell us that? I don't know. All right, so then now let's start from the time you and your father started have the, having the argument. About 6, 6.30, you said, when he got home? Yeah. Tell us exactly what happened from that time on. Even what was said. I mean, it was just a lot of yelling. I mean, it was... It was every, I mean, it was everything that he had been telling me for the past months and months and months about just how I had ruined his retirement and how I had pushed him back and now you know he'd never be able to do the things that he wanted to do because I had saddled him with a lot more expenses and that I had told him that you know once I can get a job then I have plans to make amends for the things that I had caused for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's he's yelling. Yeah. He's heated. Are you yelling back at him? No. I had never yelled at my dad. And are you sitting on the couch downstairs, like you said? I was in the living room, yeah. And at what point does he put his hands on you? It's just, at, I mean, it's like maybe five minutes into the conversation. So, I mean, there's not, there wasn't really anything that was a trigger that I can think of. What was your reaction when he grabbed your shirt and pulled you up? I mean, uh, I mean, I had always been passive, so I mean, I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't fight back or anything like that. I just tried to get my my grounding, and then, you know, and then we were just standing, and you know, it just continued on. And then what? And then after that, uh, I started the whole process of gathering everything. And where's your mom at this point? She was still in her office. Did she intervene at all? She had gotten up to say that, you know, like you need, like you need to settle down, or you, you know, some some sort of diffusing statement that she always used to make. And then my dad yelled at her to stay out of this, and then she just went back into there. Okay, and then what? What happened next? Um, I mean, then it was just like a, it was just a lot of like just it was just a lot of yelling and confrontation between me and Dad, but it wasn't anything more physical about it. And like I said, I was just going up and about, 
you know, getting my stuff and taking it out to my car and getting back whatever I could, whatever I could gather. And what did your dad do while you were doing that? He was just following me around. Just making sure you were gathering your stuff to get out? My, my possessions and not taking anything of his. And how long did that go on before Cody shows up? I mean, that was like for three, three, four hours or something like that. So you did that for three hours? Yeah. Gathering your stuff. And dealing with Dad and... Because it wasn't just like... he so just he wouldn't pack up those two little bags you brought. It was three hours? Yeah, he wouldn't just... I mean, I went onto my computer to, to back up some stuff onto, like, some flash drives and, I mean, all that other stuff. But it wasn't just like with him where I could just go and do my thing. You know, I mean, he would stop me and then we would talk for like an extended period of time and then I would start to do my thing again and then it would stop again and I mean that's all that was. Was your father wearing this? Yeah. And what about that gun on his waist? No. He didn't have that on? No. Is this normal? No. I mean I had I hadn't seen him have his gun since since like high school. So he doesn't walk around like this normally? No. Why do you think he would be like this? I don't know if it's because of what he had told me that if I came back that he would kill me. And like you said, you're afraid of him. Yeah. But we're here. We're here to this, this, this. This is the person that is coming to, to solve the problems for you or came home to solve the problems. There's the one who always sticks up for you, including talking to the girl. She talked to the girl in Bulgaria, didn't she? Yeah. She had conversations and said that you know, you're not a bad guy and uh, how this breakup basically is effect you had, didn't she? Told him it was bad. Here's the problem. Is that. This one's behind you, supports you. That one's behind you, supports you. This one, I'm sure, cares about you, but is upset. Because, like you said, you have ruined his plans for retirement so he can't retire because of the financial loss. How much money did Cody give you? Um, Sixty thousand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dad gave you how much? Like a hundred thousand. Mom gave you how much? It's like thirty thousand or something. So like around two hundred thousand. And the vast majority of this money went to some girl on the on the internet. So they're upset. I get that. But we know he didn't fire a gun. We know she didn't fire a gun. We know he didn't fire a gun. He shot the second he walks in the house. At what point does he come into the house? Like 10.30. And where does he enter? Through the garage. Where does he park his car? Under the the awning thing. Outside, not in the garage? Right. So do you see him walk in? Or hear him come in? No. So you're upstairs maybe, or where are you when he comes home? When I when he came home, I was doing... I was uh, gathering the, some of the like power bars into my little so shoulder satchel thing. And where are the power bars? In the kitchen? or In the kitchen. So you see him come in? I, I hear the door, but okay. then that's it. And then when do you see him? I, I see him when he walks into the kitchen. And what do you guys, what what is said? I bet he asks me what I'm doing, and I basically tell him the quick, short story, because at the time, my dad and my mom are talking. Where were they? They were in her office. Okay, and what is the short story you tell that Cody? Co that Dad caught me still talking to the girl that had caused all the problems and that uh, he was kicking me out of the house because I had broken his rule. Did you tell Cody that he threatened to kill you if you came back home? No, I still didn't tell Cody about that. I just, I had told Cody previously when I went to Cornerstone that that's what uh, dad was going to do if I had made any more mistakes, not the specific one that I had caused, but if I had made any more mistakes. And then Cody told me that 
he was going to do that when I went into one of the side offices with him before they officially dropped me off. When you went to Cornerstone? Right. So your dad had told you in the past before that he would kill you? Right. For what reason? For, if I basically did anything related to this, again, causing, costing him a lot of money. And Cody knew about that? Right. He didn't, he just didn't know about um, the one that was just said. Whether or not he knew from, like, the paper that my dad had written out of all the consequences and everything like that. When did your dad write this paper? Before they uh, came to get me on the 4th. Yeah, I mean, I don't know the exact time. Do you know where the paper is or what it's written on? Uh, it's written on, like, a uh, green, like a greenish yellow college rule, just piece of paper and pen. In the office or a bedroom? Or I don't, I don't know where he keeps all of his stuff. All right. So, what else do you and Cody talk about? So then, after talking about that, he says that he'll take care of it, and then him and my dad, they're the ones that always yell and raise their voices and everything like that. So Even did your dad eventually enter the kitchen? Or did Cody go to your dad in the office? No, my dad came in when he heard that me and Cody were talking. And what what was the conversation then? When they started to talk, I just left the room, and I just went back upstairs. So you didn't hear what they talked about? I mean, not in any... It was, it was more just that he was defending that it's just, you know, that I just did this, and that it's not like it's costing any money. Were they, were they yelling? Did they raise their voice? They, they were talking. They were. They were yelling. Did you hear any threats or? My dad had said that um, that he was that everybody had agreed that if I had done this, that I would have to go. That there wasn't any more wiggle room or second chances or anything like that. And then. Uh, you know, he came around to the base of the staircase, and then he told me that I need to go. Your father did? Yeah. And then I told him that I was just trying to pick up the last few things that I needed to. Uh, there was, like, a bag of my, like, a, a trash bag of, like, my clothes um, that I had still not unpacked from when I got back from Cornerstone that I just, you know, had to gather and put into my car, you know, all that, just some random stuff. And then, um, I don't know what time I actually left, but I think it was closer to, like, midnight or something. And, and when you left, where was your mother? When I left, my mom was still just in her office. And where was your dad? Dad and Cody were just yelling inside the kitchen. So I guess when not, you left, not really, you heard them not, yelling? Not really yelling anymore, but they were... It was basically just the same exact conversation that had been going on where there was nothing left and then Dad looked through some of my things to make sure that I wasn't taking anything that wasn't mine. Uh, I think the only thing that he had a problem with was that uh, I had taken, like, um, like some of my, my paperwork bills from, like, the Chapman Law Group, but then since I wasn't the one paying for it, that they would need those, but then I still just ended up keeping it because I figured nothing else was going to, like, be covered for me or anything. So then after I left, I took that, the Fort Christmas Road, um, that connected up with 50, and then I was just at the Publix for the rest of the time. The same Publix we talked about earlier on 419. So yeah. from about midnight till 7 a.m., like you said, you were at Publix. Publix. And then is everything else the truth as far as the job interview the job and so on and so forth? All the rest of the times were accurate. And when I looked at the site, I, I did not, I, I only saw a small blurb. So when did you learn that your family was dead? I had been worried since last night when I was, uh, just in the hotel, but I knew when you guys 
told me. I mean, like I knew when you guys had told me. You already knew, though. But I had... You already said... You knew. At any point, did you feel like you needed to reach out to Cody and see if he was okay, or...? I just didn't want to call anywhere. I just didn't want to know. But you couldn't call. I, well, I mean, you had brought up the hotel, hotel room was there. Fun, but I just didn't, even, I didn't even think I was to use that. You got a medical background, correct? Yes. You ever been to an autopsy? No. Okay. An autopsy tells us a lot of things. Cause of death, a lot of times, how close somebody was to something. Again, remember what I told you earlier? She didn't fire a gun, he didn't fire a gun, he didn't fire a gun. So they didn't get into a shooting amongst themselves inside the house. Angles tell us a lot of things. Dad was over here when he got shot. The bullets in the cabinet and in the wall. We know that. We, that's the, one of those facts we just can't dispute. I see where shell casings are over here. I see where shell casings are in here. I see where shell casings are there. Cody was shot the minute he walked in the door when he first got home. Bullet went through him from his from his head to the back of his head hit the door frame and packed it into the wall. He never fired. He never fired. She never fired. And we know what time Cody left work. I mean, from his boss, from his co-workers. And you got to remember, we've talked to everybody before we talked to you. So we know what time he left work. We know why he told his co-workers and his boss why he left work. And we know what time he got home. And we have text messages that he has sent people afterwards. So based on what you're telling us, that he comes home and has this confrontation, talks to you, talks to his dad, you leave about midnight, and he's still there talking to your dad in the kitchen, none of that adds up. Can I can approximate the time of death based on the body? Now is the time, Grant. Now is the time, buddy. I'm, I'm just so I believe this, this, and this happened while you were still present in the house. And for whatever reason, you don't want to tell us. We understand your father was abusive. And we understand that he was the asshole. And if he threatened you, that he was going to kill you when you came back, you were probably in fear, were you not? So did your brother come home to try and defend you and then this gunfight happened and you got so scared that you left? No, I mean, I, I, I had left when I had said that I had left. Which time? Around the night or midnight? No, around the midnight time. Again, we know stuff from, from the medical examiner office. Of times. I've said this a couple of times. He never fired a gun. He never fired a gun. She never fired a gun. Nobody did. Nobody in the house fired a gun. Fact. We know. I'm running at DNA off the guns that are on scene and the cartridge casings. And all Is there any reason to believe that your fingerprints or your DNA will be on any of those weapons or the cartridge cases that are on the scene? I mean, not that I can think of. I mean, I know that me and Cody had, you know, like, I mean, we had used each other's guns before in the past, like when we go to the range, but... But you what? said you had no access to these guns now. Right. I mean, but yeah, I mean, it was like a long, that was a long time ago. So, I mean, there's... So the gun that's still on scene and the gun on your father's waistband, is your DNA or fingerprints going to be on it? Not that I can think of. Let me throw something at you. We pulled financial records from your dad, you, Cody, and your mom. Remember that payment you made? Which one? Which the payment on, on uh, that, that bill you had? The five yeah. ninety nine ninety nine. I saw that one. Well, guess what got paid right about the same time? What? $33,000 of debt was paid off of his credit card. Same time.
same time, within a very short time of each other. Those things go together. Records. Records show what was happening. Wait, thir what happened? $33,000 on, I think your dad, it was a USAA credit card. He had $33,000 was paid to pay off that credit card. I, I just don't know where else to go to get you to, to, to come around because it does not make any logistical sense of what you're telling us. It doesn't. If these two got in a shooting, we would know. We would know they shot each other. We'd know that. But why mom? Things just got so bad and out of hand, like never it's been before in your life. Never been here before in your life or your family's life. He's pissed. His future, his retirement, his plans are being upset by you because of the financial cost. I would almost bet this is just a horrible, bad incident that on any other day wouldn't happen. But you and me both know, as does she, what happened that night. You're coming around, and I really appreciate it, Grant. I do appreciate it. Now you're starting to tell more of the truth. Everybody minimizes when they're in a stressful situation. They do. My boss and I start yelling at me. I try to minimize the effect of thinking about what am I going to do? How do I explain to him what happened legitimately? Not that I'm, I want to be a liar, but let me explain to him how legitimately something happened. With how I bumped my defender on my car, got a ding in it. Try to think, well, let me how am I going to explain this? And you've already told us a lie. This whole map thing is bullshit. So when people start telling little fibs, they add up the big ones. And I told you, just tell the truth. I already know the truth. I know the truth. You can't convince somebody of something they already know the facts of. Walk outside today, you try to tell me it's night, and I know it's, it's, it's noon. I know it's daytime, right? We both agree? Here's the time. Tell me what happened. Tell me what really happened in this very short time to get to where we are here. Tell me a hundred times. None of them fired a gun. None of them. The thing called gunshot residue. There's no gunshot residue on anybody's hands. Nobody fired a gun. He didn't shoot him. He didn't shoot him. Neither one of them shot them. I'm telling you. Look at everything. He walked in the door, shot them, and he walked in the door. Because right down here is a bag he carries in. Dropped right there where he opened the door, walked in, and gets shot. There's Dad's lunchbox right there. Dad came home, was probably messing with it right around here. Arguments, whatever's going on. But there was even an argument. Dad gets shot and he drops right here. And most likely either got pulled or crawled over here. Over here. I wonder what DNA is going to be in that blood right there. What's going to be on your Dad's pants? Cause we got his pants. We take we take all the clothes, all everything, everything that we take. Your DNA going to be found on his pants? No. You sure? It may be something, a question I'm asking I already know the answer to. I know, but uh, my DNA wouldn't, shouldn't be on his pants. Shouldn't? Okay. Explain to me, I just need you to tell me, why the minute he walks in, he gets shot. He shot, it's right there, just above there is, is, is what it is. We got an investigator of the autopsy right now, and a doctor saying, "Here's what happened. Here, where he shot. Cody shot right below the eye. It comes out the back of his neck and into the wall. Dad shot twice. And the doctor basically said he could have crawled from here to here because of the injury. And we're gonna look at their clothing, your clothing for DNA, gunpowder, blood spatter." All of that. Inside of your car. All the stuff that's in your room. All your electronic footprint we're going to look at. We will look at it. We will see it. It's, it's a whole lot easier for you just to say what happened than to have to come up here and say, here, boom, 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 because that, that may, may change the direction of this case severely. Of whether somebody says, here, let me tell you what happened. It got, got me here. This blew up. He's been threatening me. He's upset at me. I've ruined, you know, his financial 
success in his, his plans for retirement with the Cody house. Cody tried to get involved and you wanted to protect Cody. That makes sense. You and Cody are close. I just I, I don't I don't have the answer for anything else. So. Okay. This is this is the last time for I'm gonna walk out and then I'm done. Then I'm done for good. When I'm done, I'm done done. They won't believe, hey, can I come back and talk to you? The minute I walk out that door with your story is where you stay at. That's your that's your lot in life. I am more than willing to sit here all day and all night if you want to, to talk to find the facts. But I can't. I told you from the beginning. I will not deal with somebody who's not being truthful with me. You're not being truthful. You are not telling me the truth. You've lied, and we've forgiven you over that. We've forgiven you over it. You can't lie about this, Grant. You can't. This is too important for your family of what has happened. There's not somebody. There's not somebody out running around the United States that killed them. There's not. There's no. There's nobody out there. Some hidden killer. There's not. You don't show the, the the remorse that you should for someone who's, who's lost three family members. Body language, eyes, and demeanor. Here's the time, man. I know it's tough. Tell the truth, because when I walk out, there is no there is no another day. And it's gonna look worse for you when we prove it by the DNA, the gunpowder, the blood spatter, fingerprints. Now is the time for you to be honest with us and is exactly what happened in that house before you left. We're, we'll be there for weeks gathering evidence. We are going to build the case because we're going to disprove the fact that nobody else came in this house. We already we already know that answer, but at some point we will build a case to the conclusion that nobody else will. I, mean, I just I don't have anything else that I can say. brother even said the same thing of like when all this financial stuff was happening like why I couldn't show like a like sadness towards it and uh, I just don't know I mean I don't I just don't know what else to say do you not feel bad for doing this to your family You don't know what? You don't know if you feel bad for doing this to your family? I mean, I've been getting blamed for the last half a year for everything, and I've been trying to move forward into a positive direction. And then every day I'm reminded of all the trouble that I had caused. And then I keep being told the same thing over and over again, but there's nothing that I can do to change it. Do you regret doing this to each one of your family members? I didn't do that to each one of them. Who did? I don't Who has such an axe to grind with your family that they shot him twice in the head, him in the head, and her? Who has it? Who, here, you, you sit in my seat for a minute. Sit in my seat. Get out of it here. Sit right here. Come here. Sit right here. Get out of that seat. Sit right there for me. Sit on it. Look at it. Look at it from 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 our side. Look at it from our side. Think of it from what the way we look at it. Independent. What are we here for? One thing. The blindfolded ladies with justice. Justice. All we're here for. Justice. Look at it. Who has a motive? Who has a motive to hurt your family? You could say Jason. But we already know where Jason was. I can account for every bit of, of Jason's activity. Every bit of it. Jason gave a statement. He was, the first thing we looked at? Is Jason telling the truth? Can we verify what he told us? And in, in quick succession, we did. He said I was XXXXS. He went, yep, he sure was. And we know exactly when Cody left work. And know when Cody got home and know when Cody stopped answering his phone. And know when bills were paid. And knows when vehicles left. 
and know when they when phones tagged hotspots. Know it all. Know every bit of it. Now it's time for you to admit to what you know. Because you're saying, I didn't do something, I don't know something. It's an easy, easy thing to say to yourself, but you can't say it to us. Because facts and evidence don't lie. I've done everything I can do to get to the bottom and the truth. And we're not getting there. But I promise you, down the down at some point, the facts will get there. And then you're going to ask, hey, can I talk to you and tell you what happened? And the answer is no. After it's, after we walk out of the room, like I said, we're wrong, it's done. There is not a second chance. There's only one, there's one time to make a first impression. You heard that one before? This is it. I believe you're not a bad guy. I do. I believe you want to tell us what happened. And there's a reason this got so bad. There's a reason. And I'll say. Just like you want to tell me. 
what you want me to know about this. I get this. I get that. I don't get that. I don't get that. I don't get it. I don't. One, I get. I understand. She didn't bully you. She didn't belittle you. She didn't run you into the ground. Nor did he. I don't get it. But this is it. Because you're just about... I've kind of got a, a number in my mind that I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk out and we'll take our stuff and be on our way and you're going to go the, the way you go. But there will be a time where you ask for that life preserver. I can't give it to you. I can't. Once I cross... Once I cross a line, I gotta step over. Can't do it. Won't do it. Think, think, think about that. I want to talk to her for a minute. Think, think about the, 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 the last life preserver I can give you. Think about it. Take a few minutes just to, to reflect on it, and then we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes, and then we'll go from there. And what happens is what happens. Fair enough. You right, Grant? Okay. Need some food, some water. Good. You good to stay for a while longer? You okay? I mean, I just I just don't have anything more that I can say. I don't okay. Know what I'm not keeping here. You, if you want to stay, well, I'll, I'll talk to you till whatever, till you're you're happy with with everything and you're okay. Um. You're not detained. You're not being kept here. You're here. You're here willingly. Remember we talked about that. Yeah. You're still looking. You're still. You're still here voluntarily. I'm not. I'm not detaining you. I'm not keeping you. Like I said if you want to walk out and take a break, catch your breath, get something to eat. If you want something to eat, we'll, I've been here for for a while. If you want something to eat, I'd be more than happy to get some food. Whatever you want, we'll send somebody to go get it, or whatever you want to do. It's it's totally up to you. Of of I said, you're volunteering here. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't know what the... I will, I will stay here and talk to you until you get everything off your chest as, as long as you want to, but you're here on your own accord. We, we talked about that at the beginning, remember? You're here because you want to be here. You don't, you know, you want to, to, to come up here. You had no problem coming. You're here. So, you don't want to be here, you don't have to be here. I don't want to be here anymore. Okay. Give me a minute. We'll get you out of here. Get you up somewhere. I'll give you my card, my phone number. If you want to talk to me, you're more than welcome to call me. And uh, we'll move forward from there. Fair enough. Any questions of me before I go? Or before, before we walk like, out? I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Like, what am I uh, like allowed to do? Live your life. And what I mean, because it's like I have my, uh, like my wallet and all that stuff. It's back at the hotel room and Uh, 
We got some hotels right here in Sanford. Is it going to be all right? Good change. Okay, fine. What I'll do is uh, we'll get you up somewhere. I'll give you my card, my phone number. If you want to talk to me, you're more than welcome to call me. And uh, we'll move forward from there. Fair enough? Any questions of me before I go? Or before, before we walk right. out? I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Like, what am I uh, like allowed to do? Live your life. I mean, because it's like I have my, uh, like my wallet and all that stuff. It's back at the hotel room and like cell phone and all that stuff. What? That's probably going to remain with us. Um, we can make sure you get a get, uh, hotel and get you some food. If you need some food, something to eat. I know you say you don't eat much, but if you want something to eat, we'll grab you some food, grab you something to drink. Tell them. Um, if, uh, if, yeah, it's like I don't even know my brother's phone number off the top of my head. Well, we've got his phone. We've got everybody's phone. Oh, um, Jason. Oh, Jason? No, I don't have this. No. I don't we can get in touch with Jason and tell him where you have Yeah, I mean, I guess if you could do that. Like just wherever I'm staying or whatever. If he, you know, I just I don't know. That's I don't know. No, I understand, man. I do. I do. <coughs> so yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. Sir. Yeah, we're, just, we're trying to figure out. Well, you know, hang tight. I said. um Try to figure out a place to take it to get you to a uh, to um, um, place to stay for the night. Mm -hmm. We should work on that right and figure out what what um, what we can get you to. You good? You're your first. You good? They say you're you're free to go, but we're gonna get you to to a hotel, you know, somewhere here in Sanford that you can stay at for the night. We're just trying trying to find an arrangement for that to see who's got who's got available. Yes, sir. Got water, coke, anything? Uh, I'm my water. Bottle. All right, man. Give me a few minutes and we we'll get you out here, man. Okay. Jason's on his way. He'll be here shortly, okay? okay. Need anything? You good? No, I'm alright. I'd like to. Bathroom? You sure you need any bathroom? Anything? Yeah, I guess I can see you. Yeah, come yeah, on. We'll walk out of the bathroom. I'm going to go with you just because it's, um, it's, uh, um, Hey man, we are right there at it. Jason's here. It's going to be a few more minutes. What I need to do is just for, for our investigation, get some pictures of you. We're going to collect your clothing. And if you have no issues, we're going to get a, a swab of your mouth, just the saliva for, for DNA to go along to make sure your story goes along with, with where we're at. No problem with anything? Mm -hmm. Give me a few minutes. As I, I apologize. The clothes aren't going to be the best in where we had to, had to get some up. We got some for you, some shorts and t-shirts and some shoes. And then uh, as soon as that's done, We'll get Jason here to talk to you. Okay. All right. So good. Anything else? No. no All right. Come no. on, well, we'll go here. Th this room is recorded. The next room we're going is, is, is not recorded.
So, uh, I, I take it you know what happened. Yeah. I just, I'm going to ask you plain out, you, you are not part of it in any way? No. How, when's the last time you saw everybody? Uh, I left the house between like uh, midnight and like 12.30. On Thursday night? So Friday morning? I going to the front. The why? Just, did you, that's when you went to a hotel? No, no, the first night I, uh, I stayed just in the public's parking lot by the tractor supply. Okay, and why did you leave, though? It's because Dad had kicked me out on uh, Thursday because I was still talking to the woman that had caused everything, and I was uh, using Mom's cell phone to do that with her knowledge, but uh, no, n not uh, Cody or Dad's. So then Dad found out somehow. Uh, and that was one of the things that he had said would lead to my being removed from the premises. So he forced you, he basically told you you had to leave? Yeah. Okay. So who could have done this? I don't know. I don't... So you didn't have any problems or troubles with this woman or the online? You didn't owe no. them any money? No. I mean, there's no. no, like, loan shark out looking for you or... No. I, I just don't see how things aren't adding up. I just... I'm really confused, Grant. I don't understand... How did you get money to pay for a hotel? I still had a few hundred dollars on my debit card, what? and then Cody uh, gave me his debit card. Okay. And I don't know. I, I want to believe you, Grant, but you're the last person that I could put in that house. And I know what happened over the last six months. I can understand the troubles that you've gone through. But it's hard for me to think that you would break to this point. Mm -hmm. But I don't... I, who else can I blame? Who? How are we going to find out who did this? I don't know. I don't have the answers. So what are your intentions? Do you understand what we have to do now? If you're not the person that did it, we have months of stuff that we have to take care of from our dead parents. Months. Months. You know how much stuff is in that house? We have to go through it all. I have to call people in California to let them know that Margaret Amato is not alive anymore. I got to call at 3 o'clock in the morning because Cody's 30 years old and has perfectly good organs to donate. And I can't, I can't call that shot. He's not an organ donor. I had to say no. So that means there's someone out there that could have used his organs, but we weren't prepared for this. I love you more than anything in this world, just like I loved Cody, Grant, and Dad. I know Dad was an asshole. I know Cody was an asshole. But they were our family, and they would have never done anything to hurt us. Mm -hmm. The shit you did, you could have been in jail. You would have been in jail for years. Mm -hmm. And they covered it up for you. I have a feeling the FBI is already involved because no matter how much Dad can overcome the money laundering, that's money that was moved. Just because they gave it to you as a gift, you that that you can't just claim gifts as income. The FBI wants to know what the fuck is money being moved in that amount. I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't believe you, and I probably will have resentment for the rest of my life, whether you did it or you didn't do it, but I need closure, I need to know
know what happened to my mother, my father, and my brother Cody. Because I wasn't there to fucking help. And that hurts me. That hurts me a lot, man. I may not have been able to stop you. You probably may have hurt me too. But at least I would have known what happened. And now I'm in fucking who knows what now. I am lost. And it scares me that you want to leave here and not face what happened. Because you're putting my life at risk then. You're putting Donna's life at risk. Grandma's life. How do we know what you're going to do? What happened on the job interview last Friday? It all sounded good. It sounded like everything was moving forward. And then I was supposed to hear something on Tuesday or Thursday of this coming week. And? Nothing? It was just on Friday. It was last Friday, so it's been a little over a week. No, it was just this Friday. That's not possible. Friday was yesterday. Yeah. So you're telling me you had a job interview yesterday, but you got kicked out Thursday night. Right. I had to get my suit and everything and put it into the car. Okay. Where was your job interview? It was over on uh, Lee Vista with uh, something scripts. So, I mean, so they'd be able to verify that you were there for an interview. I don't know. I'm going to feel really bad. I mean, this is just... I understand. I mean, I really do. I understand all your thoughts and what you're thinking and and everything. And this is just, um, you know, I know what I did to everybody over the months. And okay. Everything like that. I know you did. And I know that you know the hell of dealing with it every single day even when you're trying to move forward yep. with Dad I, and Cody and all that stuff. Yep, and I understand it was probably harder for you because you lived in the house. I had the option of getting out, which gave me the ability to not have to deal with it on a daily basis. I understand the sh mental struggles you went through with Cody and Dad's relationship, you and Dad's relationship, everybody's relationship in the family. You know how smart everybody is in the family when it comes to medical information. And that's what scares me even more about you. If you didn't do it, then you have to know that someone else did it. There is no way that there were people out there looking for our parents or brother. They had to have been looking for you. There's no way that mom, dad, or Cody owed anybody money, had anybody sh looking for them because of something that they did. No, I don't think that it's some money shark or monger or somebody like that. Right, because nothing was stolen from the house. Right. So, like, people that are looking to compensate for financial obligations would have taken TVs, computers, jewelry, monetarily things. Right. From what I've been advised, that is not the situation. So that leaves that the people were murdered for the reason that they were in the way of getting to something else. I just I don't understand why I don't understand why it happened. I was taking my steps forward despite everything that I was supposed to do that I was supposed to be doing. The slip up was still communicating with the woman, but what were you allowed to take when Dad kicked you out? Obviously, basically your card. Basically, my possessions: my cell phone, my iPad, my Surface, some clothes, weapons. I don't have any weapons. So there's gonna be no weapons in the hotel that you no. were at last night. No weapons in the car. No. No weapons buried on the property. No. I don't. I sold all my weapons when I was trying to make money. I yep. Home. I remember my mom, mom telling me that. What? What about uh, what? You, yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say, but I'm scared.
scared for you and I'm scared for myself and I don't feel comfortable with you being around me alone. I'm sorry. I could take you physically, but if you have a knife or know where a gun is, I'm fucked. And I have little girls that I have to raise. I have a, a woman that is depending on me for the rest of my life. I understand. Even if you didn't, it's going to be so hard for me to figure out what to do with you. You do not deserve jail. But I can't come to fucking have attorney press charges for you to be killed. Uh, Grant, I need you to be honest with me, man. I need to have closure. And if it doesn't come from your mouth and I have to hear it from an attorney or a, a law enforcement or the news, it's going to be harder for me. And I know if you can take mom and dad and Cody's life, it's hard for you to comprehend that my emotions are going to be that, but it's unbelievably scary, Grant. And I don't believe in God. I don't have a strong religious belief, but I will pray that this is solved justifiably because it was not fair that mom, Cody, and dad's life were taken. They did not deserve it. No matter what feelings were felt by anybody, they were good people. Mm -hmm. And they showed it by protecting me all the time. But dad kicked you out. That's so because I still broke the rule and that it was apparently dad's job to be the hammer person or whatever he would describe it as. Right. I, I was told that you would not be have access to be able to contact this woman. Why do you feel the intent to still contact her? It was just the whole emotional thing. I mean, that's, that's okay. all that I can say. So are you saying that you love the woman? I feel like I did, yeah. Okay. You feel like you did, so you don't feel that way now? Well, I mean, now it's pretty much... You know, I mean, it's not what it used to be, is all I can say. Because she's aware of what has right. happened in the last several months. Right. So why do you feel the need to still contact her? I don't know. I mean, it's... I don't, I don't know, apart from... Just like that feeling when you care for somebody and you've been with them for however many months. No, I know that feeling. So, I mean, I was just... You know, I knew Looking that I for closure to some degree, yeah, and I knew that I could never do any of the money stuff anymore. Okay. So I guess that was like it hurt, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, because you can't like, carry that persona that you carried before. But you know, the crazy part is, you're still the same person. You are still Gran Amano that I grew up with for 17 years. That I played with that we hid shit from dad so that we didn't get in trouble? Who covered those grenades? Mom. Right. I just... I don't... I don't feel like we're getting anywhere and I'm gonna be honest, I don't feel comfortable with you staying with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, if in a week or a couple of days or 12 hours and something else is discovered, then I might have a change of heart, but I have no other options in my head of what's going on, especially if you're confirming that there's nobody looking for you. Huh. And if you're saying that you ran away or stayed in a hotel because you were forced to or you were told you couldn't stay there, I, I don't live there, so I have no proof. The only people that live there are dead, so they can't say anything. But uh, the morgue called me this morning, so I have to make decisions for Mom, Cody, and Grant and Dad in the next, you know, a couple of days. So uh, just letting you know that um, 
I'll be making those decisions because until I'm given verifiable information that you did not do it, I don't think you have the right to make that decision. You already made the decision on whether or not they can live or not. That's not your job. All right, I'm ready. I do love you, though. Just remember that. Just like Mom, Cody, and Dad loved you. Nobody loved you any more or any less. Pray for mom, dad, and Cody anymore. Each mess of the chapter. You have anything else you need to talk about before we let you go? Because mm -hmm. now's your time. You know that. Mm -hmm. Like Danny said, once you're out of here, you there's no coming back from this. We're giving you every opportunity to tell us what happened in that home that you have not told us. Mm -hmm. So you're aware that when you leave here, you're not going to have any chance to redeem yourself and tell us the truth after the fact. I understand. And you're okay with that. Yeah. You can live with yourself knowing that you're not going to tell us the truth. I said what I can say. You ready, man? Yeah. Question for you real quick. You don't want to hurt yourself. No. You don't want to hurt anybody else. No, no suicidal thoughts. No. Okay, come on. Buddy. The trial that followed would grip the nation, captivating the minds of those who followed every detail. Amato maintained his innocence, despite a growing mountain of evidence that painted a chilling portrait. A digital forensics analyst testified that the thumb drive was connected to Grant D'Amato's computer at around 11.30 p.m. on January 24. The triple murder scene was discovered the next morning. Now, let us await D'Amato's verdict as it is read by the presiding judge. Mr. D'Amato, if you could please stand. As to, and state at this point, any uh, thing that the state wishes to address with the court prior to me sentencing Mr. Romano? Well, just one thing, although it may be academic, um, there is a mandatory that the state be imposed. Twenty years in the sentencing. All right. Based upon uh, this case, 2019 CF 337 CFA, the state of Florida versus Grant Amato, you've been found guilty of three counts for killing both your mother, your father, and your brother, Margaret Amato, Chad Amato, and Cody Amato. At this point, you've been found guilty by a jury of your peers who have now indicated that you are not to be sentenced to the death penalty. Based upon those circumstances, the court is limited to one finding and one sentence for you. As to each count, the court would adjudicate you guilty. I would sentence you to life imprisonment without any possibility of parole as to each count. I further would indicate that you are to be released to the Department of Corrections as soon as feasibly possible. And otherwise, sir, just God have mercy on your soul. Nothing further at this point. <laughs>